In this video, I would like to give a short introduction in the Spaceboat software. The Spaceboat is boat verification software developed primarily for the space industry. It is based on VDI 2230 and the ECSS handbook. Spaceboat was developed for different use cases, for example, from single boat verification under single loading condition to multiple boats under multiple loading conditions. In other words, it can be used for analysis on both equipment and the spacecraft levels. Besides classical torque wrench tightening, Spaceboat allows calculation for a torsion free tightening method. In addition to axial and shear forces, the tool can consider bending moments, external torque, and thermoelastic effects. The tool has several input and output interfaces. For example, it can read loads from Nuster and Punch file or CSV format files. It can import and export boat groups in the Excel format. Analysis results generated by the tool are stored as HTML file, which can be then later used for the reporting. Spaceboat includes the database manager, which allows significantly reduced time for the input preparation. Of course, the um, the manager just helps editing the database itself and the, the content of the database is the responsibility of the user. So I'll go ahead and uh, show you the tool right now and uh, I'll start with the database. Uh, the database can be called via database manager and as we see the database stores information about the materials, bolts, threads, frictions and the nuts. And the user can for example change the I don't know, references for the for material parameters, can add new materials, uh, modify the bolts, and so on. Then I will continue with the first example. The first example is a um, work example from, from the CSS handbook. We have the bolt joint uh, M6. Um, a LAN with a nut uh, which clamps two aluminium plates. So first we create the new session. Uh, we define the bolt which is a LAN M6. We have it in the database. All the fields are automatically filled in. Then we select also the material for it. Then we continue in the same way with the counterpart. That's a nut and uh, that's M6 and the counterpart material. Good. Now I'm going to perform actually the detailed analysis, including the flange verification according to CSS. So we change it back to the detail. We say perform flange verification. Under since the accurate calculation is done, we click the bolt force ratio is calculated. So meaning that the accurate subroutine is going to be close. Now we can proceed with the definition of the plates. The first plate as the hole diameter of 6.5, outer diameter is 32, and the thickness of 2 millimeters, it's made of aluminium. And the second plate, very similar, 6.5, diameter 24 and 3. Good. Now we proceed with the most important part, which is definition of the preloads. Preload depends on the friction coefficients mainly. Uh, well, here I use the default values, however, the actual spread and the value of the preload would really much depend on the minimum and maximum friction coefficients. Uh, the prescribed torque here is 13. I can quickly check what's the utilization factor. Okay, and what would be 10? We have only 60%. Okay, 13 sounds like a good one. Um, then we continue with the definition of the loading. The axial load would be 1 kN and the shear force is 500 kN. Good, we are actually ready to perform our first analysis. The friction coefficient in the flange is 0.2, which is quite conservative. The safety factors, we are going to keep them by default. Since we prescribe the loads, uh, the loads table would be empty. So we save this. Um, Example, session file, example 1, we go on the calculation tab, we click start, and we immediately have the results. We see that margins are positive, very nice, and we can go to the full report in order to see the details. The full report provides the whole information about all the bulk parameters, material parameters, it tells us what's the uh, load factor between the bolts and the plates, it tells us uh, lots of different information. 
uh, when we want to double check the results, for example, or when, when we have to provide the results for the double checking of GPU. Good. Now, uh, I want to show how to deal with uh, several groups in the same session file. Uh, as you can see on these buttons here, we can delete, add, copy, paste uh, the both groups. So I'm going to copy the both group and paste one. And I will rename it, say, simplified. And uh, in order not to define lots of parameters for the flanges, actually, a lot, in a lot of situations, it is sufficient to provide only the force ratio, the ratio between um, how much of the load is carried by the bolt and how much is carried by the plate. But because in majority of the space applications, the preload is much higher compared to the axial load, therefore, the accuracy of the load factor does not really play a big role. So we go back to the simplified method. The total clamp length is uh, 5 millimeters here. All the rest parameters, well, I'll just say 50 50 percent. And all the rest parameters will be still the same. So I save it, go to calculation, and I see the results. And uh, we can actually see that the difference is actually not that high. In reality, if we want to perform even more conservative results, we can see that 100% goes in the bolt and 100% goes in the plates, which means that the whole flange actually carries twice the axial load, which is a very, very conservative case. I save the file, go to calculation, and uh, yeah, we have slight negative margin. But uh, I want to repeat this is just for this particular example where the axial load isn't that high, considered compared to the preload itself. Okay, now. I want to extend this example even further and attach the um, FEM results to it. For this purpose, I have prepared a special file in CSV format which has the information for three elements 101, 102, and 3 for three subcases. And here, uh, FY represents the axial, the axial load. And as you see, the moments are relatively small, so we're going to neglect them, even though the tool can actually deal with them. Okay, I go to the Loads tab, I click Import, select the CSV file, and okay, they are ready. And now I'm going to copy the original group, paste it, and uh, move it down, and rename it Default Group FEM. And instead of the prescribed loads, I would do the load table. I say the out of plane direction is y. And I'll define the element range. Good. We are actually good to go. Safe calculation. And what we have is actual safety margins are quite high, higher than we predicted. And we go to the details report and uh, to the default group FEM. And uh, we have that the most, uh, we see that the most severe case is actually load case 4, and we can identify which is the most loaded bolt under which particular condition. Um, so, actually, in order to simplify the handling of the groups even further, we can edit the groups inside of the uh, Excel. So, for this reason, we can export the groups. We click File, Export Groups. Export example two, and uh, we have in the same folder right now the the Excel file generated, which includes information about the groups, which includes information about the standard material and some other parameters. As you see, FEM FEM results, uh, well FEM objects are also included in, in this table. Uh, a table is only used for the simplified flanges, therefore the detailed flange configuration was automatically recalculated in the simplified one. And in order not to store all of the material parameters, both parameters and so on, the labels from the database are used. Therefore, user has to be very careful that and ensure that this label actually exists in the database. Okay, um, now I'm going to show you one example of the complete spacecraft 
which is relatively large. Um, the session has 270 groups inside. And as you see, the yeah, element IDs are already defined uh, different friction, friction coefficients and so on, different uh, prescribed torques. Uh, so we have the punch file with the quasi static results that's MPC forces. Um, the tool can actually work with the CBUSH and the MPCs, and in this particular case, the bolts are presented as the RBCs. So we have the grid definition and the MPC definition at the header, or RB2 definition at the header, and afterwards goes the, the punch file itself. Okay, we click on the load, master and interface, we define the punch file. Let me select the punch file again. And the punch file actually has about 600 megabytes. Okay, so we select it, click read. Now the tool is going to read the whole punch file in less than maybe half a minute. Let's see what the result is. Um, it read more than 1000 load cases uh, for almost 2000 elements. So we click apply and the load case table is filled in automatically. Okay, safety factors, I keep them as they are, and we are good to go with the calculation. We start the calc. What does the tool now do? For every bolt group, it calculates the margin of safety for every bolt under, under every subcase, and stores the minimum margin of safety and the maximum loads, and the corresponding ID of the element and the subcase. And at the end, we're going to have the peak report for each bolt group, which is the most loaded bolt under what's the most severe load case or subcase in this particular matter. Okay, we're almost ready. We have the detailed report done. We see quite some negative margins here, but uh, well, the input data was pretty much made up. In terms of friction coefficients, we go to the detailed analysis here, and we have all of the information. For example, we want to see why for this bolt group the, we have a negative margin for sliding. Okay, we have two load cases which are quite severe, under the sliding is reported for this particular bolt. So we would have to look what is really happening under this load case for this particular bolt. In order to simplify also handling with uh, many different bolt groups, uh, we implemented the multiple modification feature. So you can select several groups at the same time and uh, change friction coefficients, for example, to something realistic. Yeah, and you see that friction coefficient has changed. Um, well, that was just a short introduction in the bolt tool itself. The more details you can find in the manual, which includes the theoretical backgrounds with the calculation of each margin of safety and with all the details. And in addition, it includes a verification example and your features of the tool itself. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask us under info at spacestructures.de or by the phone. Thank you.